How to open a Stargate portal A Stargate portal is a man-made device which opens a doorway in space and time and enables travelers to connect to distant realms or higher dimensions. NASA has discovered that portals exist naturally around the Earth. Accessing them with a device may therefore be much easier than first thought. Known as X-points, portals are born from the mingling of Earth's magnetic field with incoming solar winds. It is where the Sun and Earth become connected by an uninterrupted path. These portals open and close a dozen times each day. Magnetic reconnection, VO magnetic lines of force from the Sun and Earth, crisscross and join to create the openings. X-points are where the crisscross takes place. In essence, these are wormholes in space. Pyramids have long been associated with being used as stargates for pharaohs, after death. With the capacity to generate a torsion field from within its structure, pyramids can focus Earth's vibrational energies towards their apex into a beam. In 2011, Semir Osman Ejek at the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun tested for infra and ultrasonic sound. An energy beam was detected that was 13 feet in radius and measured 28 kilohertz. This is the same frequency Ralph Ring discovered in his acoustical levitation experiments while in the military. Further experiments by Dr. Slobodan Mishdrak from 2010 to 2012 showed that the source of the 10 kilowatt ultrasound energy beam from the Pyramid of the Sun is a metallic plate beneath the pyramid at a depth of 2,440 meters or approximately 1.86 miles. On some level, pyramids seem to operate like giant radio receivers. But instead of collecting radio frequencies they collect Schumann frequencies from the ionosphere, a radar image of the UV coverage by the telescope in Kunming, China, shows that it forms a kind of eye, at its center. This has many symbolic implications as we shall see. The word pyramid comes from the prefix pyre, meaning fire, and the suffix mid, meaning middle. When combined together, they form the concept fire in the middle. Les Brown describes this middle as the root or first dimension. Dr. Patrick Flanagan believes the five angles of the pyramid project a beam of radiation towards the center into what he refers to as biocosmic energy. Joe Parr describes it as the place where mass particles emanate from. Mathematically, it is the geometric center of the pyramid. Dan Davidson spent 35 years of personally funded research into finding how shapes and different materials convert universal ether into other forces, and, energies. In his book, Shape Power, a pyramid's shape acts like a lens, focusing the Earth's magnetism. The reason the pyramid shape is the best at focusing energy in this way is because on the atomic level, the abundant element carbon, which is the basis of all known life in the universe, uses a tetrahedron shape in making organic compounds. The fire in the middle concept has been incorporated into the fields of mathematics and physics. Marco Roden's symbol for enlightenment is this concept buried deep in his vortex-based mathematics where number represents geometry. He calls it, the primal point of unity. Roden's powerful symbol has been compared against other secret symbols, like the Freemasonry symbol for the square and compass. And the Masonic tattoo of a sun in the middle of a triangle, with an eye at the top, surrounded by an Ouroboros. In the 12th century, the shield of the Trinity diagram orientates the triangle upside down, while a related tetragrammaton and puts the face of God in the center. Churches all over Europe use this symbol. In the fifth chapel of the Palace of Versailles, France, a tetragrammaton has a triangle with the four-letter name of God, written in Hebrew in the center, and enclosed by a circle. While the circle represents unbroken perfect symmetry, Joe Parr defines it as the energy bubble, or pyramid orb a pyramid creates when it is energized. Marco Roden defines the bubble as a torus. In either case, it represents the physical manifestation of energy, in three spatial dimensions. 
one of the more profound representations of the fire in the middle concept is derived from the tetractors. This ten-point pyramid, arranged in four rows, was believed by Pythagoreans to be at the root of all nature. The capstone, or top point was considered to be divine, as it alone touches the heavens. Each row of numbers represents a different spatial dimension, and one of the four elements, while pairs of rows could be read as musical ratios. The tetractries embraces within itself in seed-like form the principles of the natural world, the harmony of the cosmos, the ascent to the divine, and the mysteries of the divine realm. The Kabbalah uses a tetragrammat and tetractors to manifest the 72 emanations of God. Read right to left, the number equivalents of the letters are translated as follows, I equals 10, H equals 5, and V equals 6. Once the sum of each letter is added together, the great name written symbolically as IHVH becomes fully manifested. According to the Kabbalah, mankind must climb the tetragrammaton through spiritual healing in order to reunite with the Creator. Both the seed of life and Marco Roden's fingerprint of God can be combined with Pythagoras as ten-point tetractors. This perfect fit between mathematics, music and geometry has already been extended into the discipline of physics. In the Eightfold and Way, baryons of up, down and strange quarks are arranged in a decuplet. In the standard model, a three-dimensional tetrahedron can be constructed for all 16 elementary particles of matter. The Higgs boson, which gives mass to the 16 elementary particles, is inscribed as a circle while the photon is inscribed as a hexagon. The gluon is positioned in the center. Both parity and the three generations of matter can now be easily understood in terms of its location inside this tetrahedron. The six quarks in the standard model are an indication of the higher dimensions of space. Coincidentally, a stargate requires six points to define and address all location in three-dimensional space. Two points for the x-axis, two for the y-axis and two points for the z-axis. In the theoretical framework of string theory, six extra dimensions are said to be compactified while the three spatial dimensions are not. Time is also considered as an extra dimension. While it might sound strange for a bosonic string theory to require 26 space-time dimensions, and superstring theory to require 10 space-time dimensions in order to be consistent, these two numbers already occur in the top and bottom of the Kabbalah tetragrammat and tetractors. What is more amazing, is how the Kaliya Biyal manifold, with Ricky Flatness string theorists use, resembles the two-headed god. A god of duality, like harmony and chaos, or possibly the outer and inner world which are separated from being united together. In quantum physics, there is wave-particle duality. If this six-dimensional manifold of duality is put it into the tetractors, in place of the six points which make up the hexagon, a familiar image emerges. A sphinx sitting in front of a pyramid. What does this mean? It represents mankind's desire to join with God, by overcoming the duality created by the lower human self which feels separated from the higher spiritual self. The seed of life is formed from seven circles being placed with six-fold symmetry, forming a pattern of circles and lenses. To a religious person it depicts the six days of creation. To a physicist, it represents lines of interference of a triple envelope from a sympathetic resonance. To a mathematician, three points of propagation form a vertex for a triangle. Where the circular waves all meet, becomes its geometric center. To a thelemite, all six points of propagation form a unicursal hexagon with a five-petaled flower in the center symbolizing a pentacle. To a practitioner of magic, it represents a planetary hexagram with the sun representing true will in the center. To an enlightened person, all six points of propagation form a Merkaba, or vehicle of ascension. The fire in the middle of the Merkaba, is the navel chakra, or sacral plexus near the navel area. It is associated with the womb, or center of creation. The concept of the fire in the middle, was not exclusive to pyramids. 
Stone circles also have the power to concentrate vibrate channel energy into the middle, or center. The most well-known stone circle is Stonehenge near Amesbury. The outer ring of sarsen stones are made up of high silica sandstone, which is composed of quartz. Quartz crystals have a piezoelectric quality. The asymmetry of its atomic groups makes silica an effective transducer for converting mechanical energy into electrical energy. Sound waves are mechanical energy. The sarsen trilithons behave as tuning forks. In fact, the trilithons could be thought of as tuning fork crystals. A tuning fork oscillator will resonate close to its target frequency according to how it was cut. They therefore could keep an ultrasonic beam steady for communication. If a spherical stone was placed in the center of Stonehenge it could act as an optical lens or radio receiver for the sympathetic resonances created between the trilithons. In 2012, several bluestones have been tested at the site and found to sound like metallic bells, drums and gongs. Both 432 Hz and 360 Hz were measured at the site. Both the harmonics of the Schumann frequency 7.83 Hz. A sacred chant of specific tones will cause all the surrounding stones to resonate. Constructive and destructive interference patterns form around the stones. Stigmatic experiments held in the King's Chamber of the Pyramid of Giza in 1997 by John Stuart Reed showed how the Eye of Horus symbol appeared as a vibrate channel tone within the sarcophagus. When struck, the sarcophagus sounds like a gong due to its 2 to 1 ratio. In 1620 Inigo Jones was instructed by King James I to map Stonehenge. In keeping with his classic tastes his plan changed the U configuration of the inner trilithons into an elegant hexagon. His mapping fits well with the hexagon-shaped semantics pattern which demands symmetrical geometry. If Stonehenge was utilized as a place for harnessing Schumann frequencies from the ionosphere, its circular dimensions are perfectly suited to function like a human eye. A human eye uses a biconvex lens to refract light and focus it into an X point on the retina. This is where the real image of the object of interest materializes. Notice that the shape of the beam of light emanating from the convex lens forms a pyramid, or triangular shape, until it reaches the focal point. On the back of a Federal Reserve note the Eye of Providence or All-Seeing Eye, is centered on the capstone of a 13-step pyramid. It is also centered on the Black Pyramid of Ecuador found in the 1980s. What is the significance of the eye being inserted into the capstone or pyramidion? The pyramidion is the most important piece of a pyramid. Made of diorite, granite or fine limestone and often covered in gold leaf, it focused the energy of the pyramid, like a lens. When pyramids are built they are completed up to the final capstone. The pyramidion which is a single piece of stone is then lowered into position. It is squared on the bottom, in order to fit snugly into place. Once placed on top of a pyramid, it allowed an open connection into higher dimensions, or spiritual realm. Pyramids, from around the world have their pyramidians removed in order to prevent anyone from connecting with higher dimensions. For example, the Pyramid of the Sun in Bosnia has no pyramidian. It was removed by the builders even before it was buried under layers of soil to hide it. The ultrasonic beam emanating from the Pyramid of the Sun is therefore not focused. The pyramids of Khafu and Khafri have had their internal components removed. One of these components was a jed with human hands holding a crystal orb. In 1970, one such orb was found in an underwater chamber by Ray Brown in a crystal pyramid, in the Bermuda Triangle. Inside this crystal orb, are the images of the Pyramidian. A symbol which represents power and completeness. The crystal orb, or oval in the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun is located inside the K2 megalith, which lies 180 meters from the entrance. Its dimensions are 12 by 6 by 8 inches in diameter. Without this oval quartz crystal, the pyramid would not emanate a 28 kilohertz signal into the ionosphere. Ralph H. Blum translated the markings on the K2 stone. It says, gate is closed, 
we're on standstill. We will have to fight to defense and conquer, until we're able to go through the Stargate. The Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun is a fully operational Stargate. Opening it will require great care. The Pyramidian and Quartz Stone need to be in place for the Pyramid to focus the correct resonating frequency. The human body must also be put into proper vibration by way of meditation. In this painting, the Egyptian sun god Ra, rides his solar bark into the afterlife. Notice seven rays of light are coming out of the sun. These represent the seven chakras of the body. Here is a frequency chart for the seven chakras. Since pyramids are tuned to Schumann frequencies, the human body must also be tuned to them in order to travel through the stargate. Jopar discovered, in his pyramid experiments, that neutrinos passing between the Sun, Earth and the constellation of Orion, increases only at certain times of the year. Specifically, December the 13th to 16th and at peak times of the 11-year sunspot cycle, when neutrinos are created by the Sun in far greater amounts. It is at these times, when the pyramid will enter into hyperspace. This continuous energy conduit, or stream between the Sun and Orion, moves in a direction towards Orion, and originates from the black hole at the center of our galaxy called the Great Annihilator. The Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun is the best choice for a Stargate experiment. Operated by a non-profit organization, it allows for full access and thorough testing. There are four known steps to opening a Stargate portal. 1. The Pyramidion of a fully functional pyramid, must be reconstructed. 2. All seven space-time coordinates must be implemented before testing. 3. All seven chakras must be tuned to Schumann frequencies by way of vibrational ritual. And 4. December the 13th to 16th are the best times to enter the conduit between Orion and the Sun. If all of these criteria are properly met, we may be able to travel through the Stargate, and be freed from this prison planet. The question is, are we ready?